be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rabbit Trails. I'm Dennis Gebhardt, and on behalf of Guru Nation, I want to thank you all for joining us today. I am here with my sidekick, my partner on this journey, Mr. Matt Maxiano. Max, how are you? <laughs> I, I am doing all right. How are you, Dennis? Well, someday I'll learn how to pronounce the name properly. I can't believe I called you Matt. No, you're going to be Max, okay? okay? <laughs> oh, well, here we are. Uh, episode 11. My God. Double and, digits. Uh, it's been a real interesting week, man. I'll tell you. Uh, for here in California, because, you know, we've been on shutdown so long. Seems like half my life. Um, they finally opened us up January 1st. We have completed our second month, and it's like now we're coming out from this nuclear winter. I had four new clients, four clients that were my client I hadn't seen since March of last year, call me yesterday, wanted to get booked in this week. They said, we can't wait to see you. And so because of vaccinations and all of that, everybody's feeling safer. So uh, maybe things will start to come back together. <laughs> You know, I just can't wait till they let, it, let some of our people start commuting again. Because, you know, for our salon, a lot of our clients came in from outside our area. So they would either drive in from out of the area or they would fly in. Like they would fly in from out of state because we have an airport just four miles from us. You know, come to get their hair done and then, you know, go back home. But in any case, um, it's been an interesting week. And, oh, my God, on social it's been kind of crazy, right? Social mm -hmm. media is always a little crazy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> for those of you that yeah. uh, aren't aware of it, Max and I are now part of Clubhouse. And um, we're trying to figure that one out. So <laughs> Max is going to teach me. You know, he just goes, dude, you got to get on Clubhouse. I go, okay, what is Clubhouse? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Well, don't worry, I'll invite you. And so I turned around and did it to one of my friends. I go, you got to get on Clubhouse. What is that? I don't know. Just here, I'm inviting you. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. But uh, anyway, look, as far as issues go, uh, we got a couple we want to talk about today. So as we always say, the purpose of this program is not to be condescending, not to be contradictory of your belief systems. We don't want you to think that we're trying to make fun of people because we're not. But what we're trying to do is trying to provoke your thought process. So as we bring up subjects that we see pop up on social or people reach out to us, it's simply to hopefully give you some clarity on what actually is happening. Because there is a lot of opinion, a lot of speculation, a lot of supposition, but not a lot of science that's happening out in the business. So um, today is going to be interesting because, Max, you know what popped up on my screen, my radar this week, was my old friend, my surrogate child, Shades EQ. Oof. Now... You know, it, it has a, it's a fond memory in my heart because I was part of the initial team that developed that product along with Dr. Hayal Saeed and Bill Baylert. Um, we helped develop that product back in the 80s. And I was really proud of what we did there. And that product has come to be still, this many years later, still regarded as the number one demi-permanent color in the world. In fact, everybody measures their demi-permanence by Shades EQ. It is the bar by which people measure their demi permanent colors. But here's what I've seen happen. Because we are in a business where marketing is king, we have a tendency sometimes to over, uh, let's see, we have a tendency to exaggerate what a product will actually do. Now, it was originally designed to blend hair color. It was supposed to be something that if a client wanted to put some red hues in her brown hair, she could. If a client wanted to blend away some of her gray, she could. If we wanted to tone blonde hair and give it just a nice soft looking tone, we could do that as well. 
because actually the forerunner of Shades EQ was a product called Color Blend, which was expressly that. It was a color that, you know, the finish result was a translucent finish. It wasn't an opaque finish. And so it was just to give blend and reflect to the existing color. We also, when we created it, we knew that if we put it the same, if we created it using the same technology that we use with permanent hair color, that it might not perform the way we wanted it to. Now, don't get me wrong, Shades EQ is permanent hair color, but the dyes that we use, the, the dye intermediates that we used, those were designed to develop at a lower pH than traditional hair color. The traditional hair color, the pH was anywhere between nine and 10, depending on what you were working with. <clears throat> so we knew by testing that if we could get it to develop, dyes to develop at a lower pH, let's say 8.5 pH, that we would be able to, with this product, to gently swell the cuticle layers of the hair, develop those oxidative dye intermediates without creating any kind of tonal shift. So the natural pigment wouldn't really be affected. It would just be adding to what was already there. And so that was the whole concept. That was a scientifically scientific concept behind that product. So then we took it to marketing and marketing said, well, wow, if it's that gentle, it's, it's really, that's really gentle. It's like a conditioner. And so then for many of you who are old enough to remember when Shades EQ was first launched, they said, it's a color that thinks it's a conditioner. Now, if you remember that, just kind of give yourself a personal high five, because that was a big tagline, which we had to remove a few, few years later, because legal told us you cannot promote it as a conditioner, because it's a color and it's actually not a conditioner. So we took that tagline off of it. So you never, after a few years, you never heard anybody at Redken talking about Shades EQ that thinks it's a conditioner. The problem with that is that sometimes some of that old information finds its way back even 10, 20 years down the line. And so <laughs> as a result of that, some of those perceptions have come back. Um, let me tell you the, the beginning story of that. Can I do that, Max? Yeah, please. If I'm running off of the mouth, go, dude, stop. I want to say something, okay? <laughs> so, you know, I just told you Shades EQ was designed to blend, right? Mm -hmm. So in 1993, Redken hired a new guest artist. And this guest artist had never used any of Redken hair colors this person had never used deco color. They had never used amino color. They had only used shades EQ. And so on stage in front of thousands of hairdressers because Redken hired them because we got a new president and he was a friend of theirs. So he brought them on board. They were saying you could cover gray with shades EQ. And they changed the processing of shades EQ. Now, the original processing was 20 minutes, room temperature. 20 minutes, room temperature. Well, what if I have resistant gray? Well, if you have resistant gray, you can put it under a dryer for five minutes, but that's all. That was the original rules. 1993, those rules changed. 20 minutes under heat and 20 minutes at room temperature. It now had gone from a 20 minute process to a 40 minute process. And literally what they were trying to do is to bake that color into the hair. And the reason for that was that because by baking it into the hair, they would get a little bit more coverage because that's the way that that color worked. They were trying to convert a dye intermediate that normally would give you a translucent finish and trying to make it look more opaque. So that's the way all of that happened. And um, 
1996 because they still were continuing to try to cover gray with Shades EQ. They started adding background into Shades EQ. Originally, Shades EQ didn't have a lot of background. It had a lot of more of direct dyes in it than it had oxidative dyes. Like Bonfire was extremely copper. Mm -hmm. Okay, platinum, platinum Ice was extremely violet. Rocket Fire, extremely red. All of that. But because they were trying to cover gray with it, they found that they needed some more background. So they started adding background. That's why people don't really care for platinum ice today because when they watch it oxidize, it oxidizes. you see the gray background coming through. That's why when people use bonfire today, it's not really a brilliant copper. It's more of a browned out copper that you're achieving. And so red can continue to make that, that metamorphosis in shades where it was, it was transcending from what it originally was created to do to where they were trying to make it more like a permanent hair color. They also discovered that in order to get it to cover gray, you could not have it processing at anything below a neutral pH. So it had to process above neutral. And that's why today, if you mix Shades EQ processing solution and Shades EQ hair color, you're gonna be processing above a pH of seven. Don't believe me, test it yourself. You'll find that. So with all of that happening, you know, going through all these transitions that it's gone through over the years, we still have people saying things like this. This was sent to me yesterday. And this person said, is this true? And let me go to find it. There it is. All right. All right. So here it is. I'm going to read it for you. And this is in writing. So this obviously was put out by the company. Toners help correct and personalize your hair color by either cooling it down, warming it up, or neutralizing the shade of the hair. Shades, Shades EQ, is an acidic hair color, meaning after a lightning service or permanent color service, it helps bring the hair back to a neutral pH, allowing the cuticle to close by closing the cuticle with a toner or even a clear glaze, it helps the hair lay smooth again, repairs the hair, and adds shine and condition back into the hair. Doesn't that sound lovely? Don't you want to go <laughs> out and have one of those? <laughs> so, so let me tell you where I see some issues, okay? And then Max, I'll have you go ahead and share your point of view. Shades EQ is an acidic hair color. It is not. Shades EQ is alkaline. In the bottle, Shades EQ is alkaline. pH of 8.5 and in some cases higher than 8.5. Okay, so it's, and so you say, well, what happens when I mix it with processing solution? It will process slightly above a pH of seven. It's not acidic. Stop saying that. It's not acidic. Wait a minute, it doesn't make it bad. It's just you got to know what you're using. Well, then if it's above neutral, does that mean it can create tonal shift? And the answer is yes. And the, the challenge is most of the time you won't see it. If you're doing tone on tone, you're probably not going to see it. If you're doing a brunette, you're probably not going to see it initially. You may see it after the color fades away in about 30 days. You may start to see some of those warm, uh, where those underlying tones are. But in most cases, you won't see it at all. And this, of course, is shades if you just process it at room temperature. All right. Said so it helps the hair bring the hair back to a neutral pH. So pH scale, neutral, what we call neutral is a pH of 7. How can a product that processes above a seven bring the hair back to a neutral pH because it's alkaline? There's no way that can happen. So that's not true. Allows the cuticle to close. The cuticle doesn't close at seven. <laughs> Basic color chemistry. 
hair chemistry. The, the cuticle will remain closed and compact at a pH of 4.5 to 5.5. So there's no way possible this can cause the cuticle to close. By closing the cuticle with a toner or even a clear glaze, it helps the hair lay smooth again. It does, but you're not doing that. It repairs the hair. It does not repair the hair. A hair color does not repair hair. <laughs> a hair color breaks down hit the structure of the hair. That is the very purpose of a hair color. Repairs the hair, adds shine. Shine does not come from a product. Shine comes from a compact cuticle. If the cuticle is not compact, there will be no reflect. Without reflect, you have no shine. Add shine and condition back into the hair. So, Max, what do you think of that? <laughs> I mean, I think you you pretty much ran the, the gamut. Have I on eviscerated the whole deal? <laughs> debunking all of those statements, you know? I mean, like, that's a thing that I think we we all just need to sort of keep in mind at, at the end of the day. One, hair's, you know, optimal pH is always going to be 4.5 to 5.5. Yeah, that doesn't change. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So, so seven is still higher. It's a higher pH than what the hair really likes. Right. So even the statement of it's returning it to a neutral pH, that's not necessarily a great thing. You know, it's like you want to actually get the hair closer to 4.5 to 5.5. Exactly. Um, and, you know, all the other stuff, repairing the hair, I, you know, I can't even, it's like, I feel like a broken can you record. Just, you just go, you want to go, stop, stop, stop. I can't even go there anymore. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, and it's in writing. I mean, so someone, someone had a lot of courage to put this in writing or they had a lot of lack of knowledge. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Or maybe a, a lot of tequila. That. A what? <laughs> a lot of tequila, you know. A lot of tequila. Um, so when you see people say, well, I put shades on the hair to seal the color in. Shades won't seal the hair. Nothing will seal the hair, actually, unless you use right. polyurethane. So, so shades <laughs> cannot. Gorilla, gorilla glue. Gorilla yeah. glue. <laughs> That'll seal that gorilla hair. Gorilla glue. Um so there's no ceiling color in. Uh, so, so all of these things are wonderful. They sound beautiful. They sound lovely. But that's not what you're doing when you're coloring the hair. Look, we know this. If the cuticle is swollen, it will not give you a reflection. It will not give you shine. It'll look dull. It will look dull because it's swollen. So you're not reflecting light. You're refracting light. Google that, the difference between reflection and refracting. Refracting is you're breaking up that EM ray, you're that direct light ray, and you're causing it to bounce off somewhere else. I mean, electromagnetic waves travel in straight lines. They do not, tra they do not make curves. So if they hit a surface that is raised, they, they're, they're going to strike it and they're going to go off in a different, a different direction. That's why it's called refracting light. That's the difference between curly hair and straight hair. If you're a person that has naturally curly hair, if you let your, your curly hair dry, just air dry by itself in its natural texture, it will look sometimes a half a level lighter than when you smooth it. Why is that? Well, in one, the cuticle is slightly raised. In the other, the cuticle is compact. I don't so there's know more of I an got... opportunity for the light. How did I to get down that rabbit trail? Light over it. <laughs> yes. Doesn't, doesn't, Refracting, I mean... reflecting, my God in heaven. So anyway, hopefully, um, if this makes sense to you, 
first of all, own it yourself. This is what you're doing. I am not saying shade is bad. I love that product. It's a great product. It's done amazing things for hairdressers in this industry throughout the world. See, there's some things when we talk about them, people interpret that we're telling you they're bad. I'm not telling you that. What I'm telling you is that whoever is in marketing and is writing all this garbage, <laughs> that person knows nothing about what's happening to the hair. Yeah. Well, and it's also like they, they talk about the, the clear gloss, you know, and we've gone over right. that, you know, tons of times. It's like, why would you use clear, you know, when you could use something with reflect to actually increase the amount of reflect. Exactly. Exactly. And again, that comes back to our original education, the way we were trained. Um, we weren't taught this, not because people didn't want us to know it. It's because maybe they didn't know it. Right. I mean, Max, I'm continually surprised, and I'm sure you are too, when we get friends of ours in the industry and write us notes and they go, well, I never knew that. Right. And, and then they get all upset. They go, but you're telling me stuff that I've believed my entire career. I said, yeah. I said, because we can do that. We can tell we you like the to, truth. I think that hairdressers want to believe. We want to believe the next new, oh, yeah. you know, thing. Right. The next biggest technology. You can, you can make hair virgin again with this product. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. It's like, it, it's, it sounds very, you know, tempting, but, uh, you know, and, and the, I think the other thing that we also need to keep in mind is that, you know, this sort of category of hair coloring product was created to basically match or deepen hair. Right. So that you didn't have to use permanent hair color where some shades have, you know, more of the alkalizer than others, which could create, you know, additional damage to the hair. Well, that's so, the way we told so no one's her. knocking. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the way you I were mean, taught to tone hair. The, yeah. The yeah. old school ammonia bearing toners. Right. You know? Well, I tell people if you're old enough to remember Wella. Wella Color Charm and Wella Toners. A Wella Toner eighteen and a White Wella lady. Color Charm were the same color, except one you mix with equal parts of 20 volume and one you mix with two parts of 10 volume. Yeah. Because you were shearing it out. Were those uh, same, same with the Clairol cream toners they used to make. Right. Well, and even Born Blonde. That little yeah. packet, you know, you would pop into Bourbon Blonde, those were persulfate salts. Mm -hmm. So so the reason that they did that is in case you didn't get to pale yellow, you put in one packet of persulfate salts and there was enough lightning action in that to bump you about a half a level wow. and get you into that lighter category. That's the whole reason that Born Blonde was built the way it was. And of course, people didn't know that. They just thought, well, Born Blonde's kind of cool to use. You know, it's gentler. It's not really, it's not really that gentle. I mean, it's, <laughs> gentle is not a proper adjective to use when you talk about coloring hair. Right. Coloring hair is not a gentle process. <laughs> it's like, it's not. But we like to think that. And that, again, that comes back to who we are. We, you know, we're emotional people. We love the romantic story. We don't. We tell me the love story. Don't tell me the real stuff. All right. Yeah. Okay, Max. So uh, we got that one taken care of, and then another one that came through to me. It says Dennis, is this statement correct? And it's about MEA. And I think it's really relevant that we talk about MEA because there's a lot of people who know the word, the, the term MEA, but they're not sure what that is. Okay. So let me, first of all, 
tell you what MEA is. MEA basically is an alternative to using ammonia. It is the other part of the color process that's in every permanent hair color that nobody ever talks about. Because remember this, ammonia is an alchemine, MEA is an alchemine. They are both part of the alchemine family. One is a volatile, that's ammonia. So ammonia, when you apply the color, ammonia escapes in gas form. So it escapes out of the mixture. That's why usually in, after the first half of your processing time with a hair color, most of the ammonia has escaped, but we don't recognize that because it has such a pungent fragrance that the smell still lingers. And so we think it's still there. But what happens is there's a transition. It transitions from the volatile, which we call the catalyst, to the, to the fixed alkali, which is, which is the alkaline that's going to maintain the alkaline pH of the color throughout the entire, entire color process. So that's what ammonia and MEA are. In fact, to make MEA, I take ammonia, which is one nitrogen molecule holding three hydrogen molecules in suspension. So it would be one nitrogen, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. That's the chemical diagram for ammonia. If I take one of those hydrogen molecules and I replace it with alcohol in chemistry, I can now change the name of the compound. So it's no longer ammonia now because I changed one element of it. It now becomes something called monoethylenolamine, MEA. MEA means mono, one, ethanol, break it down, ethanol, which is alcohol. Amine means it's part of the alchemine family. So it's one alcohol has been changed, right? We took a hydrogen out, we put an alcohol in, and now we have MEA. It now changes from a volatile to a stabilized fixed alkali. So that kind of stays alkaline, it just stays alkaline, it stays alkaline for quite some time. Okay, it's not, it doesn't have that volatility. That's why when you use ammoniated hair color and you use non-ammoniated hair color and you use the same shade, that bright red that you get with ammoniated hair color is not going to be as bright with non-ammoniated hair color. Why? Because you didn't have that initial explosion, if you will, of volatility that ammonia would have given you. So, so that's why when people switch from ammoniated colors to non-ammoniated colors, they get a little bit of difference in the finish. That's because you don't have an explosive characteristic to the fixed alkali that you're using. So hopefully that explains ammonia and MEA to you. So here's the question. Uh, companies or brands that shy away from ammonia will typically use MEAs in their products instead of instead. MEA is an organic chemical compound that is made up of, of amine and alcohol, just what we just did, talked about, differentiating from ammonia being a gas, right? MEAs are in liquid form, which means once applied, they must be removed from the hair. Well, even an ammoniated hair color has to be removed from the hair because ammonia and ethanolamine are usually two of the main ingredients. Ethanolamine is your fixed alkali in a permanent hair color. It all has to be removed. Can, okay. can we just agree that all hair color should be removed from the hair after it's done <laughs> Let's processing? take a vote. <laughs> what I mean, do you vote? I vote yes. Call, call me crazy. <laughs> oh, my God in heaven. Yes, you're right. Okay. Um, when used in large percentages, MEAs can be toxic, flammable, and corrosive. And that is true. Here's one of the biggest challenges that non-ammoniated hair color lines have. If they're, if they're not going to use ammonia, they're going to use MEA, is creating the right ratio of alkalinity at each level. Here's where they sometimes fall down. They have to use more 
MEA in a formula to duplicate the amount of lift and brightness that would have been achieved with an ammoniated hair color. If they use over a specific percentage of MEA in their color, it can be detrimental. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to have proper people preparing these products. Because if it's prepared properly, you'll get beautiful results. You're, you, you don't have to have ammoniated hair color to achieve that. Uh, the hair looks beautiful. It feels beautiful. It's shiny. It's healthy. It all works. It all works. But that's where the areas fall off. So in our industry, we have a tendency to target those small failures and expand upon them and make them blow up like anybody who uses MEA. Oh, my God, they must be out of their head. Instead of saying no, you know, th th there's a certain uh, percentage you can use. You can achieve great results with it. Uh, I'll use myself as an example. So many of you who know me know that I just created a line of hair color for a company called Formula 18. Uh, the original grouping of colors that I created have already been out in the, in the market for almost three years. Uh, our newest collection, just, just over a year, the additional of the line extension. Well, we have two high lift blondes in that line. And a high lift blonde traditionally, um, if you're using an ammoniated high lift blonde, um, they're pretty aggressive products. They're like an oil bleach. And the problem with using a non-ammoniated product and trying to create the same result, some people use way too much of the MEA in their product. And so it ends up drying the hair out and making the hair brittle and that kind of situation. But with these two high lift tents, no problem. Why? Because we did our due diligence. We did our homework and we created a color that would achieve that result for you, create you that lift that you're looking for and leave the hair in the most optimum condition possible. So it can be done. It can be done. All right, let me see here. Um, <sighs> Okay, uh, since MEA stay in the hair, some brands may even offer a special shampoo intended to be used after dyeing the hair. The specially formulated shampoo contains ammonia that removes the residual MEA left on, that, uh, on the tresses. So what they're using here is that positive negative thing we're talking about. MEA will have an tendency, ammonia passes by, say, hey, here I am, and they hook up and they kind of pull it it pulls the, the product out of the hair. So you still have to rinse ammonia out of the hair, <laughs> period. So <clears throat> the problem here is that people explode this story and they say, well, MEA never gets out of the hair. That's not true. The reason that we have problems with products that have MEA in them is because people don't do a proper post-oxidation. The same thing with ammonia-based hair color. So it's not, it's not an issue of products. It's an issue of behavior. A good post-oxidation treatment is going to be rinse the hair till the, till the water runs clear. Shampoo not once, but shampoo twice. Spray an acidifying spray into that hair to stop the oxidation process. See, when we get to rinsing out colors, I'll guarantee you, if you go to your salon this week and you watch your colleagues shampoo hair when they're taking a color down, I'll bet you there's some of them that the shampoo doesn't take them more than two minutes because they're in a hurry. I'm going to tell you right now that if you're only shampooing the hair for two minutes, you are not removing all the residual product out of that hair. You can't possibly be. Oh, unless they have hair that's only a half an inch. If they have half an inch of hair, maybe. So that's one of our biggest failures, we don't do a proper post-oxidation process. We leave residual in the hair. And when you leave residual in the hair, any hair color is going to start to make the hair dry and brittle. It's not because of MEA, you can't get it out. Remember the molecular weight of MEA is about 68. The molecular weight of ammonia is 17. So it's much easier for MEA to come out of the hair than it is for ammonia. That's science.
That's why most non-ammoniated hair colors don't stain the skin. They don't have a tendency to stain the skin like ammoniated hair colors do. Why is that? Why? Because you don't have an alkalizer that's actually penetrating deep into the skin or deep into the hair. So you're not going to have those staining actions. So there are a lot of positives to being non-ammoniated. Mm -hmm. um, and like they say here, many organic salons use MEA based on uh, products because of the lack of odor and less chance of skin irritation. So I think my point here is that Yes, MEA is very commonly used. Most manufacturers that make non ammoniated hair colors use MEA. Doesn't make it a bad ingredient. Okay, it just means don't believe all the story. Look, if I want you to buy my product and I don't use MEA, I'm going to tell you how bad MEA is. If I want you to buy my product and I don't use ammonia, I'm going to tell you how bad ammonia is. It's the game. It's the game they all play. So uh, I don't believe half the things I say. I mean, um, I, like I said to Max when we talked about this before we started the show today, I said, we send in words, we receive in pictures. When you tell me you can't get MEA out of the hair, what I'm seeing is like, it's hanging on. You can't get it out of the hair. It's going to be in there forever. Not true. It's Not in true. jail. It's in jail. <laughs> it's in hair jail. So Max, how and do you feel about that? I feel great about it. And I just want to kind of clarify with everyone. So the first half, we're talking about MEA in a demi-permanent hair color. And then the second situation, we're talking about MEA being used as the alkalizer in permanent hair color. And um, just, Thank you just for the, that. the, yeah, my pleasure. And I, I just wanted to add one little, you know, kind of tidbit is I've talked to three different hair color chemists about this and they have all agreed at three different times not all together that ammonia is still the most effective alkalizer for permanent hair color because it will push the dye intermediates into the cortex the deepest and develop them with the most uh the least amount of sort of damage to the hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it makes know. it, it facilitates the process. Right. It makes the process much easier to happen. Yeah. You know, and absolutely. Well, you know, it's like the same thing with they, if you talk to all of them, they'd probably say, yeah, I like PPD dyes too. Paraphenylene dyes are the best dye intermediates to use. We, we can't do that nowadays because of all the, the restrictions, but um, at the end of the day, they're the best to make it happen. So uh, we've addressed Shades EQ. We've addressed MEA in this episode. Do you think there's anything we need to... Uh, to talk about uh oh we do need to talk about the 21st of march don't we yes we do drum roll <laughs> please <laughs> 21st of march it is a sunday and for the first time rabbit trails will be going live we will be live streaming on march the 21st if you are interested in finding out more details about how to be part of that live stream process, please reach out to us. Uh, you can reach out to Max directly. You can reach out to me directly, uh, or you can send us an email to info at gurunation.net, and we will be happy to get back to you. We're very excited because it will actually give us some real immediate interaction with everyone. Uh, we're both excited about being about being part of and doing that program. So um, you can also drop us a line here on YouTube if you would like. Remember that uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, if you would like right here below us. We totally appreciate all the new subscribers that we have uh, grown over the last month. Thank you so much for your support and your belief in, uh, in what we're doing. Um, we try to make it... Uh, fun and without being too 
<clears throat> commanding. We try to make it fun and something that will give you little tidbits that will help your journey become more successful. You can also reach Max and I on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. And we invite you to visit our website, which is www.gurunation.net. Uh, uh, explore our educational tab. We have two really great programs coming up here uh, in the month of March as well. On March the 15th, we have uh, Formulation Foundations, which is one of our uh, flagship programs that we do uh, at Guru Nation. If you want to understand the fundamentals, the foundational pieces of understanding hair color, uh, I recommend you attend that program. It's part of a two-phase program, the second half of it called Formulation Mashup it will be in April. So we give you 30 days into a private forum where you can practice some of the skills that we share with you. Then you come back to Formulation Mashup, which is the a level up. We will take you into more information. We do a little bit of the outside of the box formulating. And I think you can find that very interesting. Also on the 29th of March, for the first time in a long time, we are doing a code breaker program, which is color correction. It is a one day, seven hour program, three hours online, one hour break, three hours online. Again, uh, if you are here in the US, um, <clears throat> we ask that you register prior to the program. Uh, if you go to our website, it'll talk to you about how soon you need to be registered. So we can drop ship you your mannequin and the products that you'll need to be using uh, in that program. So we'll literally be doing hands-on with you uh, over our Zoom platform. So we're very excited about that. Uh, March is going to be a busy, very busy month for us. And uh, we're excited to uh, hopefully make you part of that program as well. So Max, is there anything that we missed? I think we've covered it all, Dennis. I think we've covered it all too. Um, it has been fun. Um, oh, I'm getting my first vaccination tomorrow, Max. Ah, oh, hot dog. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yes, tomorrow I go in to get my vaccination. That should make it fun and exciting for sure. And uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh my God, there it is. Our ride's here, buddy. Oh. Our ride's here. I'll Stop see you her. in the clearing, okay? All right. All right, everyone. Listen, thank you all so very much for uh, spending time with us. If this has been meaningful you, for you, please share it with your friends. And as always, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out of here. Max, how about you, brother? See yeah, you I'm all. Out. Bye, Take guys. Bye-bye.